All right, everybody, this is Ross. I want to review a fig for you guys today, a variety that, in all honesty, is one of the best varieties that you can grow. And uh, I put it probably in the top three most classic proven varieties that exist. And that would be this one here, the Villa de Bordeaux. There's also the Hardy Chicago and uh, the Lovable Celeste. The three of those figs have been proven pretty much to do well in any climate in the world. Maybe not any climate, but most climates in the world. <laughs> and um, so if you can grow figs, you can grow this fig. And it's real easy to find. It's extremely common. It doesn't cost a whole lot. It's one that people uh, unfortunately overlook. For me, it was the standard here. This fig was the standard for overall productivity, rain resistance, split resistance, flavor. Uh, these three varieties I mentioned, I use them as the standard to compare all other varieties to. If you don't have a standard, if you're not even growing, you've never grown Villa de Bordeaux for a number of years, you don't even know what a fig is. So I judge them all against this one here and I, believe it or not, I've actually found a fig that I think is better um, in terms of uh, fitting a similar flavor profile, but just being overall a better fig. And um, I do find that Villa de Bordeaux is one of the most productive varieties. So it does have that going for it. Every year it will produce a ton of fruit. There's a ton of fruit on this branch here, but count how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's 12 fruits just on this branch. And it's, uh, it's 12 fruits in a very tightly packed space. So your tree doesn't necessarily have to get very big to produce a lot of fruit, although it will get quite big. This is usually a very vigorous variety. I have many copies around the yard. I have a number of them in pots. I have two of them, actually maybe three of them in pots, and I've got about three of them in the ground. And uh, for that, for, really for that reason, it's so productive. It is quite rain resistant. It has been raining here a lot, and they're mostly unaffected. We had a hurricane that came through. They're mostly unaffected. It's a mid-season variety. It has reasonable cold hardiness. It's one of the more cold hardy varieties. So if you're gonna choose one variety, uh, this is a good place to start. I'll tell you that. Because these varieties, the like I said, the Villette de Bordeaux, Celeste, Hardy Chicago are the kings. And I have, believe it or not, about, I think in the last few days, I've had about 10 figs ripening at once. They're all ripening in different stages here. It's early August, but I gave this tree a head start in the greenhouse. It doesn't need a head start. It'll produce in mid-August for you guys normally without a greenhouse head start. This tree got a late start, believe it or not, because it had about 20 Braba on it. So it produces an incredible Braba crop. The Braba crop's also just as good, almost as good as the main crop. Uh, that ripens about a month prior to the main crop. So if you're trying to find something that does well, again, in all climates, this is the fig. It produces a Braba, uh, produces a very tasty main crop, and the Braba is very good. So I've picked a few figs over here because there's also another branch up here that you can probably make out that just has a ton of fruit on it. Uh, again, very tightly spaced. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Plus I just picked three of them, two of which were on here. So there was about 15 fruits here, 12 fruits here. This branch has got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 11 fruits on this branch. And then we have other branches along the tree. This has three, three. This one over here had about six. I've already harvested a couple off of that. And then we can count this, another branch over here one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight fruits over here. So it's got a lot of fruits on this little tree, plus the 20 Braba it had. I ended up 
letting the bravas go for a long time. But eventually I said, you know, I'd rather have more main crop because those large amount of bravas was hindering the main crop. But um, I could have had about 20 bravas on this tree. Um, it grows super well, as I mentioned. I have a part of the tree here which isn't very healthy. I'm going to prune this out. And uh, I also have a sucker coming from the base, the soil, which is then going to take over this area here. So this section of the tree I'm shaking is not very healthy. It's a lower growth. It seems to be more diseased. The growth doesn't really look as great over here. So I'm going to eventually, again, in the wintertime, prune this out, keep the tree nice and healthy. Plus, I've got some growth growing this way anyway. But I do have a nice sucker from the base that is extremely healthy. No issues with it. And maybe at some point in the future could become the main trunk of the tree if uh, the rest of the tree, as it gets older, needs more rejuvenation pruning to it. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing. I'm going to remove an entire scaffold on this tree in the wintertime. Uh, this one here is called Petit Au Beak. And I have another variety called Valet Calda. I have another one in the ground called uh, Nero 600M. My Valet Calda, by the way, over here is producing um, some interesting fruits. Also has high production. Believe it or not, it did actually take a beating. You can see the beginning now of these red colored fruits. Even when they're not ripe, they have a nice coloring to them. You can see that most varieties will be green and hard. Others may have some redness on them. The Villette de Bordeaux produces some very red colored figs as they ripen. It's a pretty good indicator of the variety. You know, you know I'll show you real quick the uh, in-ground tree I have. This is my Nero 600M that's been in the ground now for three years. It doesn't have any fruits on it, has very little fruits on it this year, uh, simply because we did not do a whole lot of thinning. And the tree unfortunately has uh, a very dense canopy. It's huge. This tree is massive. I can't even really give you a great view of it, unfortunately, but that's the best I can do. It's huge. It was it was a foot off the ground, and now it's uh, it's about as tall as me now. So it's going to be six feet pretty soon. It's going to be over this house, I imagine. Smith, right next to it, is probably about seven feet tall. But you can see how dense this is, how thick this is. This is inevitably what the leaf pattern will look like on a very vigorous tree. This is the leaf pattern you'll see, but it does have multiple different leaf patterns. And this tree, because it's so dense, the fruit buds never set. However, on these higher branches here that are getting more light, there is the fruit buds present. And uh, they should be forming relatively soon. It's just it's too late in the season now for something like that to ripen here in my climate. So uh, I wouldn't recommend pruning this variety all that much. It doesn't like, I think personally, being pruned. You know, it was uh, last year about six feet tall. We pruned it down to one foot tall. So that's a lot of pruning. Um, you could prune it and it'll be fine. It's just that you gotta make sure if you're gonna do some pruning, you gotta do thinning on that variety. And that thinning is really gonna help uh, get the canopy straightened straightened out because if you don't have the right canopy, the light penetration into the canopy, you're gonna sort of regret it. So highly recommend that little tip there. And let's look at the fruits themselves. Do a little bit of a tasting. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this, this fruit here, but I have three fruits, um, two of which have actually split at the bottom. Not a very wide split, but we did have a hurricane. It rained a lot yesterday. It also rained today, and it holds up very well to the rain. It doesn't crack all that much, even with this crazy rain and bad temperature swings that we had. It does tend to mold unfortunately. So it's not the best fig for drying. 
Um, if the, anything is exposed on the inside, if it does split, it does get large cracks in it, it will mold. And you'll see this green mold in here. I've seen this for years. However, if you have drier conditions, it's very possible that you can get your fig, believe it or not, uh, to dry on the tree. And if you can get them dried on the tree and really well ripened, it's insane. Let me see if I can show you some of that mold in there. But again, it is a very good tasting fig. I would say probably somewhere around a four out of five, which is nothing to, uh, to be ashamed of. All right, let's show you guys the money shot here. That's pretty darn good. You know anything about figs, that is gonna have a really good berry flavor to it. There's a lot of jamminess in there and honey, nectar, whatever you wanna call it. This fig is so popular that people have even named a, uh, a flavor profile off of this. Called the Bordeaux Berry category. Here's the mold here at the bottom. I'm just gonna cut this off because I don't want to eat that. And I'm gonna also cut these others open here. Show you what these others look like. A little bit less ripe. Still very good. And this last one has got a little bit of mold sort of forming on the outside. I don't suggest, by the way, eating molds. <laughs> the smaller one. This variety, as I said, is called Petit Albique. I've had it for one of my oldest trees. I think I've had it now for five years. So it's really uh, mature now at this point. Really puts out a good representation of what this variety can actually do. And let's try it. Quite good. A lot of flavor. Even with all that rain, all that extra soil moisture. Very good. Four out of five. Let's try the one that's a bit more ripe. When they're very good, when they're very dry, they're, they can be very good. They can compete with some of the best figs. Yeah. I have had this fig, by the way, that was caprified and ripened in California. So it was grown in a very dry place. Probably the most optimal conditions for a fig. And it was caprified, and it tastes wonderful. It's way better than it is here. Um, it's probably a five out of five <laughs> when grown in a, in a better place, better climate. It tastes like cherries, I found, in, um, in California when it's caprified. So if you guys got a nice, really nice climate, you're going to really enjoy this fig a lot more than I. But... That's every fig, you know. This one is one of the few that really does here does well here, almost no matter what. And that's why I consider it a standard. Now, I did find a fig that I think is better, only because it fits the same, it has a similar flavor profile. It's not exactly the same, but it's called Moro de Caneva. And it dries easier on the tree. It doesn't mold. It doesn't split. Um, it has really good commercial potential. About the same size. About the same productivity. Uh, so for me, it's better tasting. And has better, slightly better other characteristics. Other growing characteristics to it. I'm growing that one now for uh, only a couple years. So it's too, it's too early to say. But... Um, I'm really looking forward to eating more of those figs, but I don't know if I will ever get rid of Villa de Bordeaux. 
just considering how uh, amazing this variety is. So I want to thank everybody out here for watching this one. Hit that subscribe button. If you don't have a fig and you're looking for something, I think this is one of the best. See you guys soon. Take care, all right?